we will uh, like to welcome Greece Hellenic Blockchain Association, uh, Xenios Blockchain Project, which is um, they are one of the founding members of this forum. I'm very delighted to have Tezos back with us. Very nice guy, Tezos. We have known him for a few years now. They were one of the founding members of this uh, association uh, forum. And Greece is a, is a very important uh, economy, you know, in the context of blockchain and digital assets. I've been to Greece a couple of times to Athens. There is uh, certainly great interest uh, in, in general public on using crypto assets. And there is a lot happening. Tezos has been very active. So over to you, Tezos. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. First of all, thank you for the kind words. Uh, it's really an honor being back uh, in the event. Uh, it's really interesting for me. It's the fourth year. And uh, since uh, it was the first uh, time, um, I can say that uh, indeed uh, there has been uh, some progress and uh, I can see some uh, cohesion within uh, the international uh, blockchain uh, communities and the uh, bridge blockchain association uh, has played uh, a vital role undoubtedly into that direction now regarding greece i would like uh, to mention uh, some uh, uh, cold facts uh, second best uh, economical growth uh, within the european union in the last years uh, the current government uh, is doing everything uh, they can to stimulate the economy and uh, in my opinion it's heading uh, towards the right direction uh, due to the fact that we see a steady increase on uh, foreign direct investments especially on the technology front uh, with microsoft choosing uh, greece uh, to establish uh, the biggest uh, data center uh, infra infrastructure uh, for the mediterranean area and uh, many others like Pfizer, Amazon, and uh, so forth. Now, regarding uh, the blockchain landscape, to be honest, um, I'm quite optimistic for the first time, truly optimistic. And uh, why do I say that? Both the public and the private sector have uh, been more open to hearing and getting educated about blockchain itself as technology they understood finally after all these years of education from our side the difference between crypto and blockchain and how the technology can separately be implemented into traditional businesses and industries um, and let me give you some examples so uh, one of the biggest shipping companies uh, in Greece have uh, signed a memorandum of cooperation in integrating uh, blockchain both for uh, tracing and creating an immutable ledger on their value chain and uh, also utilizing blockchain to tokenize uh, carbon credits and uh, leverage them in the voluntary carbon markets. Uh, so this was uh, a very promising uh, start. Uh, it was uh, around the, the early months of this year. It was February, as far as I can recall. Furthermore, um, we see for the first time companies trying to utilize blockchain as a decentralized cloud storage, similar to Filecoin, IPFS, and uh, so forth, I'm sure. Most of the people here are familiar with these terms. But uh, for me, this was one of the most uh, uh, optimistic times of the year, uh, seeing uh, people understanding that the true uh, utility of blockchain is uh, operating as a decentralized uh, cloud storage. Besides, of course, the immutable ledger and the enable characteristics uh, that uh, goes with it. Furthermore, uh, we are now, this is a very sensitive uh, project, of course, but all I can say is that the defense sector of the country 
uh, has uh, agreed to explore a blockchain demo in order to transfer encrypted uh, sensitive information across uh, multiple stakeholders, which is very interesting and it's going to be the first EU country that actually launches such a pilot case, as far as I know. Now, on the forefront of uh, fintech landscape, the Lenny Capital Market Commission, after a series of seminar, seminars that uh, we did uh, to them as Hellenic Blockchain Association and as uh, Xenius Blockchain Group uh, Societe Anonyme, they finally approved the DLT regime law and integrated within the domestic regulatory framework. And uh, they are uh, optimistic and open to grant the first DLT TSS license under the DLT regime uh, to Xenius Blockchain Group within the first quarter of the next year. This uh, opens uh, limitless possibilities to Greece to become the crypto securities hub, the blockchain securities hub of Europe, since uh, only one country in the European Union, in France, has been licensed uh, under the fresh <laughs> EU regulation of the DLT regime. Now, the uh, Blockchain Group also coordinated with Hellenic Blockchain Association the issuance of the first corporate tokenized bond. And uh, currently the pipeline uh, in uh, future issuances exceeds uh, 100 million euros. And uh, we're just speaking about the next couple of months. Uh, it opened uh, untapped uh, market, which uh, we didn't expect. And uh, really the market welcomed this uh, new way of financing your business uh, due to the fact that they understood the power of blockchain in terms of fast issuance, smart contracts, and self-custody of your digital tokenized asset. So I'm very happy to, to say that uh, I see both in the public and private sector, uh, increasing acceptance of the technology. And uh, all I can say is that uh, I believe Greece is going to be the leading, uh, so, uh, the leading blockchain hub in uh, Southeast uh, Europe and uh, the Eastern Mediterranean. I don't know if you have any questions about that or should I continue? Yeah, please continue. All right. The next uh, point that I would like to mention is that the leading uh, securities uh, investment firm uh, in Greece uh, has uh, partnered uh, with Xenius Blockchain Group in order to bring uh, their pipeline uh, of bond issuances on chain. The last couple of years they had uh, in total 4 billion uh, euros in issuances. And uh, one of the systemic banks uh, in Greece uh, has uh, sent uh, an LOI in order to explore uh, the blockchain integration in uh, identity management and uh, encrypted signatures in the KYC onboarding of the retail clients. It uh, brings me further optimism towards uh, our roadmap. On top of the above, we are uh, pursuing um, a meeting with the Technology Committee of the Hellenic Parliament, the Greek Parliament, as Hellenic Blockchain Association and Xenius Blockchain Group, in order to, in order for them to approve the national blockchain roadmap of Greece. Uh, this uh, is said to happen in the middle of October. There are going to be the relevant uh, announcements in public as well. And uh, on top of the above, uh, Silicon Valley, in Silicon Valley, Jones Day, one of the top uh, legal firms uh, globally, has uh, invited the Xenius Blockchain Group uh, in the end of the October next month to present the case and uh, to present our company practically on the one hand and on the other hand uh, to see how they can uh, partner their clients, their financial institutions, which are their clients in order to have 
a regulated partner for issuing tokenized securities in European Union, considering that we are going to be the second regulated entity within European Union under a DLT regime. Once again, I'm repeating the name. We're talking about Jones Day, one of the top legal firms uh, in the US. So that's it for Greece. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in conclusion, uh, I would like to say that still, even though we are uh, pursuing a partnership with uh, one of the leading universities in Athens, public Greek universities in Athens, to integrate blockchain um, and smart contracts as a, let's say, as a executive uh, course in the master's degree, we still don't see enough interest from young people to pursue to a blockchain career. And uh, I would argue that uh, this is due to the fact that uh, the AI hype is still uh, too strong and uh, everyone doesn't understand that uh, generative AI and LLMs uh, have been uh, <laughs> on the IT landscape <laughs> for quite some decades already. Uh, and uh, it's quite cynical that this hype has a distorted reality in some extent and uh, really it's very hard to find uh, good blockchain developers and uh, that's our main uh, disadvantage at the at the point as a country that uh, we need to look abroad and uh, bring uh, fresh talent besides the core team that we were lucky enough to have uh, some blockchain developers in the beginning Nevertheless, uh, I remain uh, optimistic as a character that uh, this can uh, be overcome uh, in the next uh, semesters. But uh, the trend for now is definitely uh, not uh, on, the <laughs> on the best possible course. So that's it from me. I'm open for any questions you might have. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Yes, definitely. We 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 have I have questions, but I think um, the um, well, I suppose first of all, I would like to congratulate you really for the work that you've been doing, which is uh, really really commendable, and you you should be appreciated for the fact that you've been doing all this work and the efforts that you've been putting in for quite some time, and I was really pleased to hear about the. <clears throat> the national blockchain roadmap because you see if it was that easy every country would have done it by now and we know that there are only nine or ten countries in the world that have uh, published uh, some kind of a national blockchain roadmap and this is the roadmap i'm talking about blockchain specific roadmap so not a fintech roadmap i mean some countries have blockchain mentioned in their fintech roadmap or in their uh, emerging technologies roadmap we are not talking about that small mention somewhere in a in a document we are talking about a full proper roadmap and there are a handful of countries uh, uk is one of them there's australia india and 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 uh, and um, uh, bangladesh uh, and then there are a few more so the first first of all i would like to congratulate you that this work is uh, uh, being considered in Greece because there is always, I mean, you mentioned about people, uh, uh, workforce, talent, skills, education. This will all uh, uh, improve once uh, there is uh, some higher level, national level interest. I mean, there is always top down and bottom up approach. I mean, some economies, there has been very little interest from the policymakers. But the industry came together and then uh, built things up. And in some countries, there is uh, much interest from uh, uh, from higher up to build institutions, to build services, and then uh, put everything together. But as Lord McNichol was saying earlier, it's a kind of a multidisciplinary approach, isn't it? And you are doing a really good job of uh, bringing this industry together. And my question was really around 
so there have been different different strategies and i've done uh well we 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 actually offer the uk's national blockchain roadmap as you all know in 2021 in uh, working with policymakers and members of parliament um but different countries have taken slightly different approaches some have dedicated uh delegated the the uh, this this job to certain department for example department of so in india for example the delegated department of ministry of information technology electronics in australia they delegated the job to department of business and trade i believe uh, with some obviously some input from academics so what is kind of the broader overview at this stage of uh, going about this roadmap in greece is this going to be mainly government led and then bring the industry or is it something that your team is going to take the lead and then putting together resources conducting all the research bringing together parliamentarians and so on so who is going to lead and what is the structure going to look like if you have any thoughts or any information on this uh lovely very lovely perspective and uh, i really uh, like the way you put your thoughts uh, into words and uh, you help me actually also comprehend uh, our uh, next steps as a company and uh, as hellenic uh, blockchain association so to be honest um, what i'm seeing is that uh, first of all everything has happened through extensive uh, lobbying and pushing uh, from our side, both as an NGO and as a company, to to be completely honest. And, uh, you know, uh, government people and deputy ministers, uh, they do acknowledge us as the blockchain experts uh, of the country. Uh, there is no second best. I'm not saying that uh, in an arrogant way. I'm just saying it how the system uh, sees the blockchain landscape uh, in Greece nowadays. So considering uh, that fact, we see the next steps as follows. As following, like we present the ideal blockchain roadmap from our perspective. And then we have the Ministry of Digital Transformation, parenthesis, considering that the technology Committee of Parliament uh, gives the soft go, that uh, clo uh, closing the parenthesis, and then the Ministry of Digital Transformation would finance the first step of our uh, blockchain uh, national roadmap, which, to be frank, speaking, in my opinion, would have the following, develop a truly decentralized layer one blockchain for the public sector. So having uh, that built uh, and being the first step, I believe then it's much easier uh, to build the front end apps that would connect to the layer one blockchain, uh, both for the land registry, both for the Ministry of Interior uh, and so forth. And so bringing uh, ownership uh, titles on chain and so forth. So that's how I see it, to be honest. And uh, I would like your opinion on that. Do, do, do you think this is a productive and efficient uh, roadmap as uh, first steps? Yes, I think I, it's a good idea. I think it's a good approach. Definitely is. Um, so I, I think there, there, are, there are two things about it. So the first is that you have to have, obviously, this higher level uh, appetite, you know, and, and vision so it has to be there because you cannot just develop it in isolation with few groups coming together with no national oversight so the first thing is that you have to doesn't have to be the entire parliament or the entire government but some people in the government as you mentioned you have this digital transformation department which is which is absolutely fine like i said in some countries there is department of digital the department of business department of trade so it can be any national any you know national level um uh, oversight and then once you have identified and i'm currently working obviously i can't disclose the, the the details because of the ndas and things i'm currently advising two governments right now on their national blockchain roadmap and 
the the first thing that i say to them is look you have to identify people from within government who uh, can take the leadership uh, who have an interest in this technology uh, there has to be some interest there has to be you can't you know chase and force people because if they have no interest they won't do it uh, uh, they might say yes to you and then they forget about it and then you are chasing so they have to have an some inherent interest in technology and then once you have done that then you present your case how all the things you mentioned public infrastructure uh, land titles car titles and you can give a few examples and things and then present this data this initial data and then you kind of say okay here we need your leadership and obviously every government has different parliamentary structures here we need your leadership and then you work on it you build on it so you have this leadership now you have this research phase and i've actually given an entire presentation or to to ireland i believe before they put forward their roadmap they invited me to give a an overview of how to write a national blockchain roadmap so it's a i have a full presentation on that but so this is how you go about it really so you do your research why you need it what benefits it can provide and then you collect the data so you go about identify you don't have to identify every single domain maybe start with four or five i think that's what australia did i think they started with trade business and few other domains if you look at the uk's blockchain roadmap we have about 10 or 12 20 i believe recommendations on um, on how blockchain can benefit greece is obviously you have your own unique challenges and opportunities so you then identify where is the maximum economic benefit then you uh, do some research in fact you do a lot of research and then you present this data to the policy makers and then uh, and then the third step obviously is to then put forward these recommendations uh, you do not have all the answers to the questions but that's how you start uh, a roadmap is not an answer to all of the questions but roadmap is just an, an impetus you know it provides this opportunity for policy makers to come together to industry to come together you can then develop interest working groups around this roadmap invite industries you can collaborate internationally such as forums like this and then and then you continuously you are built so it's very dynamic it's not static you continuously build on it it's just a, it just gives you a direction which i think you are doing already and i believe you may have already provided the information and initial data and the things that you have mentioned so i think you are definitely on the right path and i will be very interested to see how it goes and in fact we would love to hear from you in the coming days developments thank you very much for your uh, kind words and today in conclusion uh, i would like to say that indeed the policy makers uh, including the hellenic capital market commission uh, started having uh, as we in Greece, open ears when they understood that the blockchain uh, securities under the uh, new uh, regulatory framework of the EU, the DLT regime, uh, can uh, provide the foundation of a scalable economy to build, as, you, as the title says, to build trusted economies of scale. I mean, they saw this path with blockchain and this, is, this operated as a catalyst for further government officials uh, to be more open uh, in order to hear uh, about the blockchain and how it can be used. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm remain optimistic. Thank you very much uh, for the feedback. And uh, as you said, uh, always on a roadmap, you need to keep in mind that uh, who will stay holders, you're bringing on the table that will have a clear financial benefit both for themselves and for the uh, socioeconomic uh, benefit of the society uh, in order uh, to be easier accessible and the uh, integrated uh, within uh, the operations uh, of the businesses in the public sector that's it from me thank you very much everyone indeed thank you very much uh, uh, tezos thank you